President Biden has made greening our transportation infrastructure a top priority to help meet his clean energy economy goals. That includes green transit, which I look forward to advancing with this committee, but it also includes investments in clean electric vehicles and electric vehicle charging infrastructure. We have a massive $2.6 billion electric vehicle battery plant under construction right now in the city of Commerce, Georgia. Uh, this would uh, produce car batteries to help increase the number of electric vehicles, obviously reducing carbon emissions and uh, fighting climate change. On top of that, this plant, this plant would keep Georgia on the cutting edge of a clean energy economy and create at least 2,600 clean energy jobs. That's a win-win for my state. Uh, Secretary Moniz, uh, can you talk about the importance of clean electric vehicle infrastructure? in reducing carbon emissions and reducing our reliance on fossil fuels. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, uh, Senator Warnick. And, and also, I'd like to uh, to congratulate uh, you uh, and Senator Ossoff for uh, forging the uh, the settlement that uh, has really supported that, that that important battery manufacturing in in uh, in, uh, in Georgia. Uh, in okay. terms of the uh, EV uh, uh, infrastructure, well, I think the first thing to say uh, is that you know we have to listen to GM and Ford. We have to look at uh, Tesla's evaluation to know that electrification and transportation uh, is really coming. We have to look at the facts that uh, probably already cost of ownership of an EV and an internal combustion engine uh, are just about equal uh, ca and capital costs are coming down. Uh, we have to look at the fact that we need uh, to build now the infrastructure uh, that will again allow the market to be made uh, and to have consumers uh, want to choose those EVs uh, for one reason, because they are great performance vehicles, in addition to being clean. So, so this all comes together, and I think is a great example of our companies want to go there, our people want to go there, uh, and now we need government policies uh, that are uh, that are synergistic uh, with those with those needs. Thank you so much, and um, I was grateful to play a role in helping these companies to recognize that they needed to come to a resolution, saving a lot of jobs in Georgia. And what this demonstrates uh, and will demonstrate over time is, is that the smart thing to do for our, our environment is also good uh, public policy in terms of, of workers and the economy. Those yes. things are not mutually exclusive. Uh, we need a, a sustainable approaches to our ecology and our economy, and those things are actually connected and increasingly so. When our schools uh, fully reopen and kids return to in-person instruction, nearly 25 million American children will be exposed to harmful air pollution each day as they travel to school on buses that by and large run on diesel fuel. Children in Georgia and across America should be able to get to and from school each day without breathing polluted air. In fact, um innovators I'm, I'm proud that one of the innovators helping us to address this problem is georgia's own bluebird corporation down in fort valley georgia they're already leading the way uh, to replace older diesel buses uh the kinds that, that you and i uh, went to school on certainly i did with cleaner zero emission electric buses uh, because they see greening our school bus fleet as an urgent environmental concern and an economic priority uh, Ms. Lippman, can you speak to the importance of greening our yellow school buses? For sure. Um, uh, it, as 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 I think we touched on a couple times in the hearing, this the the opportunity to transition our our medium and heavy duty fleets, especially those uh, uh, where where government can play a role in 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 speeding those that deployment. Um, <laughs> Uh, is a real a real a real win win across a whole set of, of uh, variables. Not only do they cut cut emissions, not only do they, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Im, you know improve local air quality and health, but they help provide a market for precisely the companies that you mentioned earlier that um, that give us the opportunity to to build you know bring 
uh, electric vehicle manufacturing into our existing uh, school bus and bus facilities that we, uh, the component manufacturers, uh, Cummins, uh, for example, who makes uh, mo you know diesel engines and motors, is also now making electric motors, um, and the mo and the and the, these. Uh, investments, which can be incredibly valuable to, to communities and schools, are also part of transforming our, uh, our manufacturing jobs. Well, thank, thank you so much. And it's the reason why I'm so proud to uh, partner with Senator, uh, Senator Padilla to introduce the uh, Clean Commute for Kids Act this week. Uh, it'll help our students stay safe. It'll create good paying jobs, modernize our country's vital uh, transportation infrastructure. This bill would provide $25 billion over the next 10 years to help replace uh, these old diesel buses with zero emission school buses. And I would submit that it needs to be included in any infrastructure bill uh, that we would do in the Congress. Thank you so much. Okay.